So here we are ready to prep all of our products for the shipment. And you can see I just went ahead and laid down the labels on top of every product that needs prep. First item up is Funko Pops. There are a few different ways you can do this. In the beginning, and there's nothing wrong with this, I would just put the label right over the barcode, send it as is. The issue then became, I started getting a lot of customer returns. Maybe Amazon has gotten better since then. I still don't trust them. So it turns out Amazon typically was just taking this Funko Pop, putting it in a poly mailer and shipping it to the customer. Now, if you know Funko Pops, collectors are very particular about the box condition. If there is a corner that is crunched, the window here, the plastic part scratched, any type of box damage, collectors will return that. So then phase two of how I would prep these is I would just use some bubble wrap, little piece of tape to hold that on there tight, and then put the item label, F and SKU label here right on it. Still was getting a pretty good amount of customer returns, so I figured I'm going to invest an extra 25 or 30 cents per item to get an actual box. So the boxes that we use are from Uline. You can also use the boxery.com. There's tons of different box suppliers. Find out which one works best for you. I've been a fan of this 864 size. It leaves a little bit of wiggle room in the box because I am still bubble wrapping. Now, a lot of this may just be personal preference. I'm over protecting the product. I know how much collectors love the box condition to be pristine. So I am putting two squares of bubble wrap and I'll show you the actual process in a minute. Two squares bubble wrap put inside of the Uline box here. Again, this does cost anywhere between 20 and 40 cents per box, depending on how much volume you order with the company. So as long as that price point works with your margin and you don't mind putting the extra time in to make sure that the product is protected for the customer, this is the current setup that we use. So here's the issue. We just got the key to this warehouse space, which is why there's no equipment, no supplies in here. I'm just bumming supplies from our other warehouse right now. So for bubble wrap, typically a couple ways you can do this on a budget. Number one tool you wanna have, most of us have this laying around, is a bungee cord. Number two item is a pegboard. Now in this location, we're gonna put pegboards up on these two beams. Now on that pegboard, we can put these hooks, which we can then hang our tape, pens, box cutters, our measuring tapes, all that good stuff. But we can also have two pegs up there for this bungee cord, which goes through the bubble wrap and it then is nice and easy to pull it down rather than fumbling with it here on the table. Plus you want your table space to be for product, not for your stuff. But I don't have the pegboards up quite yet. I'll show you real quick. I'll hop over to the other place to show you what we use over there. Here's what we use over at this location, just a little clothing rack. We can fit two rolls of bubble wrap, extras go down there. So I found this at Goodwill for about eight bucks. So if you guys have the room inside of your garage or your room, highly recommend this setup here because it's mobile too. So now we come back in here, I'm at a dilemma, I need to put this thing up somewhere. I'm a big fan of just find what you have around the house if this is where you're working out of. I happen to look over here at the staircase. There are already command strips here. So all I'm gonna do is just hook it up right there. And of course we wanna be efficient, so I'm not going to walk back and forth for my bubble wrap. I'm simply just going to bring this table closer and I can just pull it right down. Now that we have our station set up, very simple. We are just going to start by getting one of these boxes going. Step two, I use two squares of bubble wrap. Step three, roll this up. You don't need to worry about folding this at all. I'll show you why. So when we put this in the box, it's going to act as extra padding. And we squeeze that down in there. This is the final product. If you want a tighter fit, a seven by five by four is another great size as well. So there's not gonna be as much space in here. We've been shipping with these 864 boxes for a few years. We haven't had any issues. Go ahead and close that up. So next is a very crucial step. We are going to take this item label put it right on the outside of the box here. And to ensure that Amazon doesn't hold this box and then open it up, we're actually going to put another label. This can be worded a few different ways. You can put do not open, sold as set. I actually just use ready to ship. Now, how we create that label is with the Dymo app. 
And if you're using your Dymo for this type of label anyways, you can just download their little software. I'll show you how to do that. All you have to do is just Google Dymo label software. This is their main little app that you can use. There's a few different settings here. What you want to do is go to label type, go to multi-purpose. Keep in mind that these labels specifically to 30334 for the Dymo 450 that we're using. The dimensions for that is a two and a quarter by one and a quarter. So we're going to scroll down here, find the medium one, one and a fourth by two and a fourth. That's already the one I have right here. I'm just gonna type in ready to ship. Personal preference, I usually just make it bold, get it so it fills up that space. I have about 30 of these Funkos total, so I'll print those out. And here's what that looks like. This is what we are going to use to put on the actual box, so Amazon does not cut that open. Finished product of Funko Pops. Like I said, you do not need to go this far with it. It's just personal preference. I like to just overprotect my stuff for my customers. I've gotten actually great feedback on Amazon because of boxing this way with Funkos. Now, the thing I will say is if you have a lot of different SKUs, a lot of different Funko Pops, and they're all being boxed like this, they all look the exact same. So make sure you have a clear way to separate these out so you know exactly which ones you guys are doing box contents with. Next up, we have some of these clearance toys. Now with clearance toys, typically there's not a lot of prep that needs to be done. The number one thing you will ever need to do with clearance items on toys are remove these stickers. Fortunately, Walmart clearance stickers, let's see if we can do one right here, come off fairly easy and clean. If I could do this one-handed, so you can see the residue pretty much pops right off, but there is a way to take that off a lot quicker and smoother. A heat gun, yes, you can use a hair dryer, but a heat gun is gonna be a lot more focused actual heat. Blast that bad boy for a few seconds, peels right off with no, typically no residue. Here's the issue is if you get plastic with the clearance sticker on it, you do not wanna use a heat gun on plastic ever. It will melt it. I learned the hard way in my early days because I didn't know any better. I had clearance video games and I thought, well, let's just put the heat gun on it and sure enough, rip that plastic right up with the heat. So especially on video games, never wanna use a heat gun there. For harder plastics, technically, you can use a very low heat setting. And if you do it for the right amount of seconds, you could typically heat this up a little bit. Now being a Walmart clearance sticker though, sometimes these will actually peel off fairly smooth. I can't do it one handed. And then a product I highly recommend is Goo Gone. Goo Gone is made to get sticker residue off of things. So that's gonna be the best case scenario for something where it's plastic with that sticker on it. But the rest of it should be fairly easy. A lot of this doesn't even have any stickers, no prep needed. So we just take these item labels right over the barcode and call it a day after that. So we just take these labels, put them right over the barcodes, no prep needed, which is an awesome shipment to do. Second thing you need to pay attention to when you are doing prep, and this just comes down to reading through prep requirements by Amazon. If any type of product is what's called open face, such as this, it needs to be put in a poly bag. Open face just means that the product itself is exposed, unlike something like this, where it is completely enclosed by the box. This is exposed. Now keep in mind, when we are shipping products to Amazon, they are going to be sitting in warehouse shelving. Warehouses are disgusting and collect a lot of dust. We do not want that to get on the product. So open face products, we need to poly bag. I'll show you guys the whole process. Before I get into that, I'm going to go ahead and just get all of this labeled so I can just push it out of the way. I have a little bit of working room here. So now we're gonna use our heat gun, get the label off, and then these are the poly bags that we use right here. These are from a company called ilovesupplies.com. We have no affiliate with them by any means, but we are a huge fan of these. We burn through thousands, um, sometimes per week, just with our prep center. A few reasons why we like these bags over a lot of the other ones. Number one is this adhesive. So when you peel off this adhesive strip, a lot of the crappy cheap ones are gonna be staticky, so you have to flick them off your hands. These are non-static, they just fall right into the garbage can. The adhesive itself is fairly strong, so your bags are not gonna rip open. The bag quality itself is awesome. 
if this thing could take a beating still holds in one piece. And last but certainly not least, you guys saw how we have to print a secondary label that says ready to ship. This has it printed right on the bag, so any, any Amazon employee is going to know right off the bat to keep that inside the bag. This is great if you are doing any type of bundles or multi-packs because you do have to put a secondary sticker on those, but now with this, you don't. Tons of different sizes available, all the way from a three by five, which is a tiny little one, great for beauty and makeup stuff, all the way up to a 14 by 20, which is what this one is, which is great for some of these toys. I'll show you guys the heat gun. I usually just keep my settings on high, so this um, cheap little $15 one from Home Depot, Lowe's, you can buy them on Amazon. Flip this guy on. I haven't used this in a couple days, so it's gonna take a minute to get hot, already hot. It's okay if the labels turn black. That's just sometimes what happens there, but you guys will see a couple seconds on there. And boom, label pops right off. Some of these are security labels, so they have a little inner part that stays on there. No residue whatsoever, good to go. I forgot to mention too, I'm just using my fingernails. Um, you can use a Scotty peeler, which is a metal blade essentially. There's also a plastic Scotty peeler, which is super nice, because that way you're not going to risk cutting into things. Just be careful if you are using heat gun, even on regular cardboard toys, pay attention if there's plastic around it. So it may not be on plastic itself like this, but there might be little plastic pieces around there. Make sure you're not gonna melt that. Also with your heat gun, this tip will stay hot, so be careful where you set that down on. This is why this looks all nasty, because we've had many times where we set it down on a poly bag or something that it's not supposed to be by. So make sure you have a safe place to put that. And the poly bagging, super easy, just take this, pop it on in. I like this 14 by 20 bag because it fits nearly anything that you were going to need to put in a poly bag. And then when you poly bag an item, it doesn't matter where this label goes. So traditionally you want to put it over the barcode. If it's in a bag, it really doesn't matter. So we're just going to put that right where it's clear and visible. Same thing with the second one here. All right, so now let's figure out how we are going to do this one here. It looks like it's pretty stuck on there, but if you can grab the corner and what you want to do with these types of stickers that are coming off, but not easily, you're not just pulling back. You're kind of pulling up on it and then slightly back and you'll get a feel for these labels. And once you get the right feel down, you can actually get them to come off like so without any residue behind which is great because now we don't have to worry about using Goo Gone or making a mess on this box. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the reality of retail arbitrage sometimes. Professional sticker peeler. If you do have residue that's left over, there is a tiny little spot, what you can do is use the same label, hear that? And you literally can just just take it off with its own label. A lot of times that's going to work. So there is a little bit of residue on this one. Goo Gone, um, you can use the big spray version. They make tiny little spray bottles as well. One thing that we'll do oftentimes too is actually you can use this as the refill and you can go to Walmart and just get blank little spray bottles and then fill it up with that. Be very careful with getting this Goo Gone on cardboard because oftentimes if a, if a clearance sticker is down here on the plastic, and you spray it with Goo Gone, that Goo Gone is going to leave a dark stain right on that cardboard, so be very careful with this. Instead of spraying it directly on the product, I actually like to just put a little bit on a rag here like that. And then you can see right here is that sticker residue we're looking at. And then when I flip the rag over, use the dry spot, it comes right off. By the way, any of the supplies that I'm using throughout this whole video, you can check out a link in the description, which will link you to everything that we're using. I should, probably should have pointed out before I ripped that off, but that said a $20 clearance sticker. This actually rang up for $9. Well, side tip, use the Walmart app in Walmart stores as a price checker because a lot of those clearance stickers, oftentimes you can find them cheaper. All right, then for a much larger toy like this, where this is literally down to the centimeter, barely fitting on, that poly bag is obviously just gonna bust open by itself. As long as it seals, I'm just going to make that a, I'm just gonna make that a little bit stronger with some tape.
So a much better chance of this not busting open now. All right, so there we have table one is done. Hop over to table two and repeat the same thing. So now we have some of these smaller Jurassics and that just means smaller poly bags. So this one is a 10 by 12 size, which works out great for smaller products. Here you can see final product, what it looks like when it's polybagged, label on the outside, everything else, no prep needed, just right on the box. So now that we've got everything done, um, and because I know I'm gonna get comments on this video, why do I have stuff underneath? That was stuff that was box damage or doesn't have an Amazon listing and I bought it for eBay. So that's all gonna be eBay material I'm taking over to the other place. So that completes the prep portion of the shipment. So now let's go over back to Inventory Lab and show you how to do box contents.